Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. It's uh, Saturday the 15th of, of July, <laughs> Saturday the 15th of July. Uh, in the church today, we are remembering two saints, Saint Swithin, who was Bishop of Winchester around the years 862, that's Saint Swithin, the Bishop of Winchester, we remember him today. And we also remember Saint Bonaventure, who was also a friar and a bishop and a teacher in the, in the church, who died in the year 1274. So two saints, two bishops, in fact, Saint Swithin, Bishop of Winchester, and Saint Bonaventure, friar, that he means he was a monk, and a bishop, and the teacher who died in the year 1274. All right, so let's pray as we start this evening's prayer, come to the end of another day that God in his grace granted to us today. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other, that glory may dwell in our land. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. And our, our psalm this evening is Psalm 118, Psalm 118. Psalm 118. All right, so let's say the refrain together. I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now proclaim his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord proclaim, his mercy endures forever. In my constant I called to the Lord. The Lord answered and set me free. The Lord is at my side, I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? With the Lord at my side as my savior, I shall see the downfall of my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in the flesh. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in princes. All the nations encompassed me, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. They hemmed me in. They hemmed me in on every side, but by the name of the Lord I drove them back. They swarmed about me like bees. They blazed like fire among thorns. But by the name of the Lord, I drove them back. Surely I was thrust to the brink, but the Lord came to my help. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. 
joyful shouts of salvation sound from the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. The right hand of the Lord raises up. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter the, and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I will give thanks to you for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come, O Lord, and save us, we pray. Come, Lord, send us now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. He has given us light, like the pilgrims with cords right to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will thank you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. I will give thanks to you for you have become my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. And our prayer. Saving God, open the gates of righteousness that your pilgrim people may enter and be built into a living temple on the cornerstone of our salvation, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, our next reading, our Old Testament reading. First Samuel chapter four. First Samuel chapter four, we're reading uh, the whole chapter. First Samuel chapter four. At that time, the Philistines gathered to go to war against Israel. So the Israelites set, up to set out to fight them. The Israelites set up their camp at Ebenezer and the Philistines at Aphek. The Philistines attacked and after fierce fighting, they defeated the Israelites and killed about 4,000 men on the battlefield. When the survivors came back to camp, the leaders of Israel said, why did the Lord let the Philistines defeat us today? Let's go and bring the Lord's covenant box, the Ark of the Covenant from Shiloh, so that he will go with us and save us from our enemies. So they sent messengers to Shiloh and fetched the, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned above the winged the cherubims, and Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, came along with the ark. When the ark of the covenant arrived, the Israelites gave such a loud shout of joy that the earth shook. Wow, the ground, that is. The, the Philistines heard the shouting and said, Listen to all that shouting in the Hebrew camp. What does it mean? And they found out that the Lord's covenant box had arrived in the Hebrew camp. They were afraid and said, a God has come into their camp. We are lost. Nothing like this has ever happened to us before. Who can save us from those powerful gods? They are the gods who slaughtered the Egyptians in the desert. Be brave, Philistines. Fight like men 
or we will become slaves to the Hebrews, just as they were our slaves. So fight like men. The Philistines fought hard and defeated the Israelites, who went running to their homes. There was a great slaughter. 30,000 Israelite soldiers were killed. God's covenant box, the Ark of the Covenant, was captured, and Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were both killed. A man from the tribe of Benjamin ran all the way from the battlefield to Shiloh and arrived there the same day. To show his grief, he had torn his clothes and put earth on his head. Eli, who was very anxious about the, the Ark of the Covenant, was sitting on a seat beside the, the road, uh, staring. The man spread the news throughout the town and everyone cried out in fear. Eli heard the noise and asked, what is all this noise about? The man hurried to Eli to tell him the news. Eli was now 98 years old and almost completely blind. The man said, I have escaped from the battle and I've run all the way here today. Eli asked him, what happened, my son? The messenger answered, Israel ran away from the Philistines. It was a terrible defeat for us. Besides that, your sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were killed. And God's covenant box, the Ark of the Covenant, was captured. When the man mentioned the Ark of the Covenant, Eli fell backwards from his seat beside the gate. He was so old and fat that he fell broken that the fall broke his neck and he died. He had been a leader in Israel for 40 years. Eli's daughter-in-law, the wife of Phineas, was pregnant and it was almost time for her baby to be born. When she heard that the Ark of the Covenant had been captured and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she suddenly went into labor and gave birth. As she was dying, the women helped her. The women helping her said to her, Be brave, you have a son. But she paid no attention and she did not answer. She named the boy Ichabod, explaining, God's glory has left Israel, referring to the capture of the covenant box and the death of her father-in-law and her husband. God's glory has left Israel, she said, because God's Ark of the Covenant has been captured. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is, of course, a classic story uh, in the, at the beginning here of, of Samuel, the life of Samuel, the, 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 great, the next great judge of Israel. Of course, the, the prophecy that God gave to Eli about the end of his family is beginning to come to pass. But the, not just that, the, the fact that they were defeated twice by the Philistines at Ebenezer. Um, this was, this was a, a disaster for them. The first time they were defeated, they brought the Ark of the Covenant because the Ark of the Covenant represents God. So if I have the Ark of the Covenant, then God will be with us. But you see, you cannot use God's, um, the, 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 the Ark as a sort of, um, you know, what, what, what is that word? Um, sort of like a magic, a magic um, potion or something, um, some, some, some instrument, like a totem. Of some sort where you use it to uh, to get power some sort of magic amulet um the gods you, the, in, the, the 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 equipment of god the the furniture <laughs> that god placed in the temple are not to be used as some sort of magic charm and that's that's what this is they're sort of they're thinking oh if we just have the box god will be with us well no 
That's not with the people at this moment because the people had gone astray because their leaders had gone astray. Eli and his sons had, had rejected God. And so the people had gone astray and the leadership had gone astray. So God was no longer with the people. And so no, no, no amount of covenant box, the Ark of the Covenant is not going to save them because God's not there. God's presence isn't there. And, um, and so they can't use it as some sort of magic totem to sort of give them the power, some sort of, you know, magic lamp or something. Just, you know, if, I, if we have it, then God will be here. No. But then, of course, they, they got routed. Over 30,000 were killed that day. The, 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 the Philistines feared them because the Philistines heard about their God, but the God that the Philistines heard about did not come to their rescue at this day because they had forsaken God. So there's a lot of lessons in this for us sisters and brothers. The first one is, of course, when we forsake God, when we go against God's word, God's principles, what God expects of us, how do we then expect him to be there for us? Um, so it's a, it's a potent lesson to learn. Uh, you know, it, God never abandons us, but we abandon him, you see. And, and the second thing that happens here, I mean, uh, quite apart from the death of Eli and his sons, which was, which in itself marked a major turning point in the history of Israel, the history of God's people at this time, the next thing that happened was Eli's daughter-in-law, the wife of Phineas. We don't know her name um, for some reason. We're not given her name, but we're, she's done a significant thing. Because on her deathbed, she gave birth prematurely. And in giving birth, she died and her son lived. But she named the child, the boy, Ichabod which means the glory has departed. And this is a powerful um, um, message that this, this, this woman is giving to the people of Israel. Today, the, 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 the priest is killed. The, 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 the heir to the priesthood are killed. The people have been defeated in battle. And God's Ark of the Covenant has been taken by the enemy. And so now, all of this is a sign to us that God's glory is no longer with us. God's glory has departed. Ichabod, the glory of God has departed. And sisters and brothers, I sometimes wonder about that for the church today. I, I sometimes feel that the church today is in a state of Ichabod, where the glory of God has departed from the building. God has left the building. And in many churches across this nation, there are just buildings, um, shells, but, no, but God is no longer there. God has left the building. The glory of God has departed. And, and, and the glory of God departs because we, we have departed from God. We have moved away from God. And so God's glory cannot remain anymore with us. What we were once the people of God, no longer. And so the Church of England, in my view, is heading down that narrow path. That path where we are turning away from God in many things. In many of our rulings, in many of our in many of the decisions of bishops and synods, that the Church of England is becoming an Ichabod, where the glory of God is departing. And 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 we are on that brink. We are, it's not too late, of course, but that's where we are heading. Because like Eli and his sons, we have leaders who have departed from God. And they're doing their own thing. They have moved away from the word of God. They have moved away from God's, God's commands and they are simply doing what they think is right, which is what Eli and his sons did. And they, as a result of that, we are in a state of Ichabod. Or if we are not there yet, we are moving towards a state of Ichabod. 
where the glory of God departs from us. All right, let's let's leave that because I, I, I could go on in, in that vein. But let's move to our New Testament reading, which is Luke chapter 20. Luke chapter 20 from verse uh, 27 to 40. Luke 27, Luke 20, verse 27 to 40. Then some Sadducees who saw, who, who say that people will not rise from the dead, came to Jesus and said, Teacher, Moses wrote uh, that, that Moses wrote this for us in the law. If a man dies and leaves a wife but have no children, that man's brother must marry the widow so that they can have children who will be considered the dead man's children. Once there were seven brothers, the eldest got married and she and he died without having children. And the second one married the woman and then the third, the same thing happened to all seven. They died without having children. Last of all, the woman died. Now on the day when the dead rise, on the resurrection day, uh, whose wife will she be? Since all seven of them had married, had married her. Jesus answered them, the men and women of this age marry, but the men and women who are worthy to rise from the dead and live in the age to come will not then marry. They will be like angels, because they have risen from the dead, they will be like angels and cannot die. They are the children of God because they have risen from death. And Moses clearly proves that the dead are raised to life. In the passage about the burning bush, he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is the God of the living, not of the dead. For to him all are alive some of the teachers of the law spoke up, a good answer, teacher, but they did not dare ask him any more questions. All right, a few points to pull out here. So it's a lot here, but there are two main points here. The first one is about marriage in the afterlife, okay? And the second one is about the afterlife itself. So here are some Sadducees. Sadducees, they did not believe in the resurrection. Uh, the Sadducees, unlike the Pharisees, they did not believe in the resurrection. They only believed in the first five books of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And as far as they are concerned, those books never spoke about the resurrection. So if, if, if Moses didn't teach us about the resurrection, about the dead living again, then there is no resurrection. When we're dead, we're dead. Okay, so that's the Sadducees' views. Now, Jesus corrected that view in the second part of the answer. So before we look at the first part, the second part of the answer, he said um, in verse 37, and Moses clearly proves that the dead are raised to life. So these are people who only believe what Moses wrote. They don't believe the prophets. They don't believe anybody else, only Moses. But Jesus is pointing out to them that Moses actually did write about the resurrection. But that, that, that they, you, you just misunderstood. You have not understood Moses, he says. Because Moses wrote about the resurrection in verse 37. He says, in the passage about the burning bush, Moses speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is the God of the living, not of the dead. For to him all are alive. And it's a powerful statement that Jesus is making. From Jesus' perspective, Jesus is saying, Moses wrote that God is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had long been dead. And so how can he be God of these people when they're dead? Jesus says, God is not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. So in other words, Sadducees, you miss the point. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are alive. They are not dead. They are very much alive because Moses said God is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. And he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which tells us that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are alive. 
We are not dead, which is a powerful statement. So here, here right here in Exodus, uh, uh, oh, uh, chapter 3, well, in the burning bush, Moses is proving that there is life after death. Because these guys who are dead are still alive right now because they, God is their God. So that's the first point. But let's go back to the second point, which is the first point. The, 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 this woman who married seven brothers, according to the Jewish tradition, uh, and, and none of them were able to, I mean, she wasn't able to bear children for any of them, and all seven of them died. You know, somebody says something's wrong with this woman if all these men keep dying on her. Anyway, it's another story. Um, uh, <laughs> the, the, the woman eventually died. And so they want to know in the resurrection who's, who's, who's going to be the man to get this woman. Uh, of course, Jesus points out that in this life we marry, but in the resurrection, in the afterlife, we don't marry. Marriage is for this world. There are certain things that God has given us for this life, for this world in which we live. But in the other universe, in the other realm, these things do not apply. And marriage is only for this life. And so in the other world, we are going to be like angels in that we will not be, we won't die. That's the first thing. But, in, but also in the sense that we will not be marrying each other. Our relationship in heaven will be radically different from our relationship right now on earth. And so the, uh, right now we have different, we have husbands, wives, children, so forth. In, in the new heavens and the new earth, in the afterlife, in the resurrection, that relationship will change. In that relationship we will all relate to each other more like brothers and sisters than husbands and wives and so on our relationship will change because jesus will uh, jesus our relationship is going to be a reflection of our relationship with god through jesus christ and so marriage is for this life not for the next life so if we're getting married it's for this is now here and now it's a different relationship in the other life all right, that's it. Let's let's leave that there. My time is gone. Let's pray. Let's pray. I have a few prayers this evening to pray before we finish. Um, so let's, let's start with this one. Our Father, the day is over, and we turn to you before we take our rest. You have been with us all the day long, and for all your mercies, perceived and unperceived, we give you thanks. Of all that has been wrong in us, in thought, word, and deed, we repent. We ask your gracious forgiveness, as we also forgive all who have offended us. Grant us now the blessings of a quiet mind and a trustful spirit the freedom from fear of a child in his father's house. So let us rest in you, be at peace with you and with all people. Tonight we pray. Amen. Lord God, we live in a world where things have gone badly wrong because we have forgotten you. We left you out of all of our decision-making. We have worshipped other gods, we have not hallowed your name as we should. We have adopted the world's standards and have not served your kingdom. The church has been declared Ichabod in many places. We have gone our own way and we have not chosen your will. Have mercy upon us, O Lord our God. Forgive our sin and folly and turn us back to yourself that we may worship you, the Holy One, submit to your kingly rule of love and justice, and order our lives according to your laws. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so we pray for
for the rulers, for government. Hear us, Lord, as we lift up before you all who bear the bewildering responsibility of government in our own country and among the nations of the world. Remember our Prime Minister, all the members of Parliament, our King, and all those our local authority, mayors and councillors, Lord, we give them all wisdom beyond their own integrity in all their dealings and a resolve to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness for all mankind. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So God of all mercy, we pray for the nations of the world with the unrest and violence of these times. Give wisdom of mind and strength of character to those who are called to positions of leadership. Overthrow the purposes and designs of those who are evil, those who plan evil, and establish the cause of righteousness in every land that all, your, all peoples may be led into the way of peace for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Look mercifully, O Lord our God, upon the, upon the world of our day and heal the sorrows and sufferings of humanity. Save the nations from the lust of power from racial hatred and jealousy, from the worship of material things, and grant that in every land the rule of tyranny may be broken, the cause of righteousness may triumph, and all peoples may learn to serve you in the peace and freedom of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for peace, pray for peace in our world. Give peace in our time, O Lord, peace and reconciliation among nations. Pray for uh, Ukraine, Sudan, Israel and Palestine, Syria, and wherever else there is conflict in our world. Bring peace and unity within the churches. Bring peace and harmony in our communities and in our homes. Bring peace and love in all our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, we turn to you with faith and hope, for you alone can save. Break down the barriers of fear, of hostility, and of misunderstanding in our world the, that divide the nations from one another and prosper all counsels that make for sanity and charity for the just and enduring peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for the poor and the neglected. Most merciful Father, we remember before you those whom it would be easy for us to forget, the poor and the homeless, the old and the friendless, and all who have none to care for them. Bless those who minister to their needs, that they may bring them comfort and hope, and show us what we can do as servants of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We remember, especially tonight, we pray for the NHS. We pray for doctors and nurses and carers and all those who care for those who are sick and suffering tonight. Lord, we pray for those who are sick tonight. We ask for your, for your intervention in their lives. We pray that you will bring, bring healing bring uh, comfort let your grace rest upon them lord we pray and bring and may they find rest and tonight may we all indeed 
find rest and peace tonight as we sleep. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And uh, I just want to pray this prayer for, for the hunger of the world. Most merciful God, we commend to your care the men, women, and children of our world who are suffering anxiety and distress because of lack of food and ample supplies for their lives. Strengthen and support them in their need and grant that the nations may grow in their concern for one another and in their readiness to share all their gifts that all may live together in the fellowship, freedom and love of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord of the nations and friend of the poor, strengthen in the leaders of today's world a belief in human dignity and in basic human rights, a belief in the values of justice, freedom and peace, in love and generosity, in reason rather than force or violence. So may the nations grow in mutual respect and understanding and recognize that the problem of world poverty is the concern and responsibility from all. Granted this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's finish with our night prayer. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace and rest tonight, sisters and brothers, from the cares and worries of this world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.